How are you watching Cal67 Gaming and uh, another one's been and gone. Yep. So it's just time for another month in games. So, July been gone. Actually, July I think I spent an awful lot of time out and about rather than yeah. in the in the house and playing playing games. So uh, possibly not as heavy a gaming month as as normal for me. Yeah. How was yours? Uh, mainly bits and pieces here there playing. Starting a lot of games, but not putting a lot, a lot of time into them, like a decent amount. But I played a lot of shot bursts. That was me. Yeah, probably about the same, like a couple of hours here and there, and like different games and stuff like that. Um, sometimes just going back to games that I played like a little bit before, but not yeah. all in all, not a lot of games sunk like, a good amount of time into. So as soon as we get in the summer, it is that. You get, you get out and about, don't you? Yeah, cause you, you better not be going out drinking every weekend. No. That's my job. You, you should be staying in the house and playing video games. Young man. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, we did play some some games. Um, and, a, and a reasonable amount. Like I say, probably more in short bursts rather than big long gaming sessions. Um, but I think probably we'll start that we always do with yeah. what we picked for each other last month. Yeah. Um, and for me, you picked. Well, for you, I picked the game which you played up uh, the original of, but uh, for you, I did choose Saints Row the Third Remastered. This is kind of what I do in Saints Row. Um, what caused me then? I, I've got quite a nice little uh, pimped out tank, so I might as well. See how, high, use. see how high I can get my wanted level. This is how, how GTA games used to be. It used to just, just cause as much mayhem as you get. Um, but GTA kind of got a lot more sensible. Saints Row never did. That Saints Row went the other way, it didn't it? got sillier and sillier. It went from being somewhat yeah. sensible to being absolutely absurd. And you know how in GTA you always hated when the, the helicopter come out? Not a problem when you've got a pimped out tank. I, what, a cement mixer? What, why are they attacking me with a cement mixer? I don't think they were. <laughs> I think that was someone doing his job and you just killed him. No, I shouldn't have been there. Just uh, drive over that. That seemed to work. I can tell you look for the helicopter, but there we go. There's that pesky helicopter. Oh, missed that. There we go. What oh, was that? An armored assault troop carrier. It appears to be shooting at me. I don't know if, if, how long I can put up with that. Would you stop shooting at my pumped out tank? Now I noticed you got a, a little skill thing for going on two wheels. How are you going two wheels on a tank? I've got no idea, but I'm just good at it. All right. Now that that is dealt with, oh, we sent another helicopter. You would think they'd learn. So you can see there, I'm a bit pissing about in a tank and that sort of thing. Um, I did actually play through a reasonable amount of the missions. I'll be honest with you though, this isn't a game that was great to go back to. Still Port as a City isn't that brilliant. Mm. Um, and it's kind of, once you've seen the joke, you've seen the joke. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's a competent GTA clone and it's, and it, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not fun, because it is fun, but it's just, why would I play this one again? Um, when I actually I've never played the first one. Did you play it all the way through the first one, like the original? 
Well, well, remember you played the Saints Row Three. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I've sure I've got all the way to the credits. Um, but you do think you get distracted with it because like as a game that you piss about on more than you you stay yeah. focused, um, and I think it's intentionally designed to make you do that. Probably because it doesn't take itself overtly seriously. Possibly because it hasn't got the the amount of content that a GTA yeah. has got. Like I say, Steelport itself isn't a, a great city to run about in. Uh, but, well, I think there's a new Saints Row coming out soon. There is. We'll, we'll see what, see what like. that's like. Um, um, I mean, because there's obviously there's two ways they can go with it. But I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want them to get too silly. But like the, apparently the original two Saints Rows were quite serious and were like proper GTA clones. And then the, the, for me, thinking back, like the first time I played it, this was just the right amount of silly, and then it just got batshit crazy. What, the fourth, fourth one, and got out of hell, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. As well as. I guess we'll see with the new one then. Yeah, I guess so. So that's what you asked me to play. What did I ask you to play? Well, for me, you uh, chose a sequel to a game which I quite enjoyed my, uh, my time with. On the most fam family friendly or family fa friendly consoles? Yes, uh, a family friendly console, but uh, I guess. Obviously, probably the most opposite thing for the console that I was on. Um, for me, you chose Manhunt 2. Just uh, sneak up on this guy here and uh, take him out. Obviously, with it being on the way, you kind of have to do the actions yourself. You can't just uh, let the character do it for you. Uh, it's amazing how many of these games are on the Wii that are uh, not at all family friendly. No, for <laughs> I think that's targeted towards family friendly gaming and everything. I don't think uh, Manhunt was what Nintendo intended to have on the system, do you? To be fair, I'm not sure that Nintendo got exactly what they wanted with the Wii anyway because they sold 100 million of those. Um, but I don't think they sold 100 million games in total. Everyone just had Wii Sports, Wii Sports and, and that was yeah, it. Yeah, the, the kind of mini game, party game sort of thing. But, uh, I'll sneak up here. Just uh, bar up. Take him out as well. You can tell obviously they had to do uh, more censorship for Manhunt 2 than they did for Manhunt 1 though, can't you? Because uh, in Manhunt 1 they'd, they'd barely done much, if I remember correctly. I bet is that because it's... Manhunt 2 or is it because it's on the Wii? I think it's because it's Manhunt 2 because uh, I think most divisions, if I remember correctly, are censored in a way. Mm -hmm. In that exact way. It's not just because it's on the Wii, because uh, even on the Wii it's got the 18 rating, hasn't it? So you'd think that they'd still be able to somewhat get away with it, but I guess it was just uh, an entirely thing. I think only the PC version doesn't have it or something. But I think you oh, kind of have a comfy. I just top the window in there. Start taking him out with. He shouldn't have bothered himself. This guy probably shouldn't have either. No, but he does have a gun. And, uh... Oh, the guy. So I said, family friendly game for a family friendly console, isn't it? Yeah. You didn't actually play a lot of this. No, um, I'll be honest, I don't like it as much as the first one. As in, wildly shaky arms controls? No, it's not that. Um, it just, it doesn't feel like it. it's much of a manhunt type of game. Cause, oh, it's definitely a manhunt type well, of game. Well, you say that, but like, yes, it's got the masses of violence and killing and everything, but the first one kind of felt a bit better in a way. The first? No, terribly, are you? Uh, I know, they were... The, the AI was thick as mints. And these ones are overtly able to spot you? Aye, that's, that's what you want for a stealth game. Do, do you think that like, the, the best way to play a stealth game is you can start punching someone no. in the nose and they don't even notice no. it they're there? But like, the entire <laughs> mechanic of being in the shadows so that they can't spot you, and you make noise to draw them, and then they turn the corner and spot you. Well, I better. 
I'm literally in the, the <laughs> very corner that I can be. Hate better. But, no, it, I just also didn't really like the story either, in a way. Because the, the entire like prologue of Intertoil has escaped the place which your character's been in for a while, and now you have to try and trace the Is, past. There's that not Manhunt 1 and 2, so what's the difference? No, Manhunt 1 was there. Um, you actually actively took it out of time. Like, he's going to all these places to learn about it. Whereas, like, in the first one, you were captured multiple times to enter places and you had to constantly escape until you took out the entire gang that was capturing you yeah. and stuff like that. It, it's hard to explain. It's just, I didn't like it as much as the first one. And, and then I got the yeah, shit. Fair enough, one. I guess. Oh, well, I, I, I've always been a bit hit and miss with the the pointy we can control that yeah, shit the, the aiming felt a bit off as well but I can do it unlike you uh, you say that <laughs> it, it also felt kind of a bit weird because it would say that it's on the target but then it wouldn't actually hit them in times and no. so no nah. I mean I'm not sure I, I, I think the first one's definitely better but like, I guess it potentially it depends because it might get better towards the end, I'm not sure, but... No, we'll see. Um, what else have I played? Do you know what I haven't played for a little while? And and it made sense because, like I say, I was doing lots of short burst gaming. Mm -hmm. I played a recent year. Oh, you quite late then, don't you? So. And I haven't played one for a while. Which this, is the, this, this is a really good one, and it's one that I had played before. Uh, I played about Forza Horizon 5. So I do like a, a racing game, and I haven't played one for a little while, as it goes. It's quite nice to, to get back into this. You see that I've got uh, one of the better cars on the game. That'll be a Mark I Escort. Fully decked out in Rothman's Racing Rally colours. Well, you say that, but... Everyone likes to drive different cars in racing games, don't they? So, hey, right, some of us like to drive good cars, and some of us don't, eh? Yeah, it's all the opinion, though, isn't it? But uh... you can see I've just about got the lead here, um, but uh, this car is a little bit squirrely on some of these corners. Um, it doesn't turn very well. If I didn't know better, I'd say it, say it was a. Uh, one of those big American muscle cars that goes fast in a straight line but doesn't like corners. You see some shitty little thing going up the inside, we'll be having less of that. Yeah, nearly took you there. Ah, nearly only counts in hand grenades though. <laughs> you should know that. Just flying around. Actually, not a, a lot of excitement, it has to be said. No, uh, that was a bit of a terrible corner there. I overcooked it a little bit. But flying through those checkpoints, no problem at all. Ultimate clean racing, no less. So I don't know if there's an awful lot that needs to be said about Forza Horizon, I think probably everyone's played it by now. Everyone who plans probably has, yeah. Uh, it's a terrific game, and it is, I mean we, we kind of touched on it there over the gameplay, but it is kind of everything that you want it to be. So for me, it's um, Escort Mark 1s and uh, Renault 5 Turbos and you know, whatever else we've got in there, the old Sega Rally. Silicas and mm. you know, and and I love playing all all that stuff. For you, it's like the these fast, super silly, fast. silly hyper cars with like machine guns on the sides <laughs> and stuff like that. And I, um, I, I like to drive the fast cars. I drive the fast cars. I mean, like the really fast cars. I drive the really fast cars. No, you don't. I do. 
I call you drove wasn't fast. It's a bank one X got. I could be outpaced by anything. No, I could oh, I could think you'll find that won the World Rally Championship. But yeah, um I think when I first played this I kinda I tired a bit a lot quicker than four because four had been well, four was based in the area that we are. Um yeah. so sort of northern England even into Scotland. Um which is great. Um this being in Mexico, I've got no personal connection to any of the, the landmarks that's there. However, it is still a proper solid racing game, so... I think yeah. the only two downsides, which uh, were to be the pick of it, at least when I was playing, was uh, the layout was the same as four, so obviously it didn't change much there, just the places in the... Well, I don't think the layout is the same. Are they? No, practically it is. Cause the structure's the same, it's like, go here, do this, go here, you know, like do where this. the different locations were seen roughly the same as well. Wow. As well as it initially, I'm not sure if it's been fixed now, um, the online multiplayer servers weren't the best. But mm -hmm. apart from that it was still a four zone rising game and yeah. they're good. So they are good. And uh, anyone that hasn't played that I mean, it's on game pass, it's, game pass yeah. Good. Yeah. It's, it's definitely well worth playing. Um obviously we're playing it on the, the X on the Series X. Um it just runs brilliantly. Yeah. Yeah. It's very smooth. 4K 60. Love it. So what else have you played? Well, for me, I played a game which got a, a little while ago. Um, and I had the intention of playing it, just never did. So I went uh, back in, on the PS2. I played Resident Evil 4. And what's this? Big thing here. Well, this is one of the bosses uh, in Resident Evil 4. So, I, th I, I think this is a. Uh, is it Salzar or something? Like, he's a small person who's now been like combined together with one of the other enemies and stuff like that. As you can see, he's just exposed himself because I've been taking out the thing attached to him and everything. So, oh, no, shit, I'm in the heat. Start shooting him, but he's also got the tentacles from outside the building and everything, which and he's got that one, damage you. one freaky green eye, yeah, yeah, which is his weak point. And if you shoot enough, he exposes himself. But also, you have to be careful because if that attacks you, it's a one shot. So it's a bit weird in a way, but uh, also got a slam attack, which does a decent amount of damage. So you have to constantly be careful. But with it being an older Resident Evil, you kind of have to, you can't just put it in quick bits and like change your weapons on the fly. You kind of have to go in your inventory and everything, so. Nothing wrong with that. Although I have to say, the, the fact that it pauses your game for you, yeah, kind of is a cheat. I like the, the whole zombie you thing where you have to do it on the fly on the game pad. I, I don't think there's a game pad for a PS2, do you? Surely you could. Uh, attach a, a PSP or a PS Vita. Do it that way. There must be a way. I don't know. I know that the... it seems to be taking an awful lot of bullets. This thing. It does, but he has the rocket launcher, the almighty, all powerful rocket launcher. Is that not like cheating? Yes, I can tell you right now because it one shots some of the bosses. I kid you not. About like that. A bit like that. However, you only get them like once every in a while, so. All right. You can't just use them. Go then. In... Why? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean why? Why this one? Because it's one of which I haven't played before. Um... But you're not playing them in order. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't played them in specific order. In a way, I technically have. Um... Which specific order have you played them in? 7, 8, 5, 6, 4... I haven't, I haven't played that much. <laughs> no, the, the entire thing is the stories of them. Like, So I played the 2 remake, which is obviously a star to Leon's bit. 4 is the continuation of Leon's bit uh, set after that. So I've obviously played the 2 remake before 4. Uh, and the 7 and 8, they, they were a continuation of each other as well. So no. I've... Even though I haven't played them in chronological order from 1 to 8, 
I played the stories of the characters in chronological order in a way. So it, it makes sense in a way. But four was one which it's it was obviously the breakaway from the fixed camera angle and yeah, tank four, controls. Four was like what turned me off Resident Evil. It's a good game. I, I can't write is it? I, 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 I get it for some people it's a love or hate sort of thing. Um, but it's actually and it was actually game. meant to be a GameCube exclusive, wasn't it? But because the GameCube bombed so badly, they ended up porting it to everything. I don't know if they put it on Xbox. Did they not? No, I think they just put it on GameCube um, and PS2. And PS2. Oh, well. They eventually obviously did. Do I mean, obviously the PS PS two's install base was. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's still the most sold console, console, yeah. Console of all time. Right? Obviously, then they've done the remaster for it for the PS4, Nintendo, Switch, Xbox One, and etc. So, obviously, more people can now play it then. But it's a really good game. Um, but you played it the way it was intended on the PS2. Yeah, I played on the PS2. It was a good game all in all. Uh, even played through one of the extra modes, which is. Ada Wong's uh, side of the story and how that fits in, so they, you kind of found out why the puzzles were the like they were, because like, with some of the stuff, like the optional, there was an optional treasure in the other church, which uh, was actually a key item for Ada, but not for Leon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they kind of wrote balance down. There's still, like, I think, one or two more extra modes for me to play at some point, so. Yeah. Yeah. Get to play them. I will do. Um, we are, obviously we've just got the new PS Plus Premium, um, which actually is really good. Uh, good selection. Uh, compared to, uh, I think Game Pass has been quiet for a while now. It has. Um, and possibly because it's new and a lot of stuff's dropped on there, it's, I think it's it's looking better at the moment. But one of the things that did drop on it day one, um, that uh, weird to say I played it on the PS5 um, but I played Tekken 2 Oh bloody love Tekken 2 <laughs> Well as soon as it went and was announced on uh, the new PS Plus system kind of knew that it would be one of the first games to take your fancy wouldn't it? Actually it does look pretty, pretty good uh, playing it through the PS5 I mean, it's completely overkill playing Tekken 2 on the on the PS5, like, but um, oof. I mean, it's a it's a more modern way of oh, playing, isn't it? That was a, a big white nut yeah. punch. Um, but there you can see I kicked the kangaroo's ass anyway. Um, I'm still I'm still trying to trying to figure out all the the moves and how I used to play it. I used to be brilliant at this game. Um, but it's been a long, long, long time since I played it. Um, so obviously there's there's some things that, that I remember, but my timing's all off. Yeah, it just comes with the playing the game though, eventually, won't it? So. Well, there is that. Um, obviously in these team battles you need to have lay, because basically that's cheating. Although no, it's, it's actually it's Marshall Laws, the, the, the really cheap character. Um, although he's pretty pretty overpowered when you when you can strike together a few moves. So pretty much if you want to go overkill you use both in your team. No, I pretty much I so. Which you are using as well. Ah, oh, I've got I've got an insurance policy if I need it. Yeah. Looking back, it's amazing how bad that bear looks. <laughs> <laughs> looks much better than your games. And it's so big and yet can avoid like all, all your kicks and stuff. Also, the throws just look weird on the model. Yeah, you, you like go in the uh, kuma and everything, which yeah. Just kick him in the balls. There we go. I love Tekken 2. It wasn't my first Tekken. I actually did play the first one when it first came out. But the first one 
bit janky. Um, Tekken 2, just, oh, well, I, can't, I can't even tell you how many hours I put on into Tekken 2 when it first came out. Um, and I think it's my favourite Tekken game, although Tekken 3 is pretty decent too, has to be said. Um, so again, this is in on like the same short burst gaming. Well, um, it, it's a fighting game, it. so you, you're not really expected to exactly sit yeah. down for hours and then just play it constantly. All back in the day, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but like, better than like playing that game that has been like short burst sit down. So uh, it's it's fit with my my gaming philosophy over July. Um, but, like coming in, coming in at whatever time in the morning after after going out and. And it's like, you know, your taxi drops you off, you don't, you're not ready, you just go straight to bed and think, oh, I'll just play 10 minutes of Tekken. That's, that's, that, that works. Well, well, it's a game which uh, works well for short bursts. Of course sort of it does. Well, we game. Yeah. So I played that. Um, what else have you played? Well, I only really played one other game for a, a good amount of the time, which was, uh, like, Again, um, a game which went on PS Plus is a uh, new system. I played uh, Death End or Request. So what's going on here then? So I've just entered a new dungeon. I uh, got a new party member and everything. So I realised that my current party is a bit not on on the same level as uh, the new party member. So I need to do a bit of grinding, obviously. But uh, here we are, just uh, finding some enemies and encountering them. As you can tell, quite powerful that, that was. Um, but the characters in this game obviously exceed in different things. So the player here uh, exceeds in more range combat because of weapons pistols. Whereas uh, Sheena and Silica are more melee combat focused because of their, they use swords. But uh, no, it's actually got quite. You're good not just combat. brushing them aside. No, but uh, what's with the spider dress? Well, because the entire point of the game is that yeah, in a what was meant to be an unreleased game, which has been modified to like in a way, so it's like that bugs in the game which have attached themselves to the characters and like the NPCs and that. And the entire point is that Sheena isn't actually meant to be an NPC, but is instead an actual person who's been put into the game. And you have to try and get her out. So. It's. It's not the, the most normal story, but. Yeah, I suppose. If you, if you get in it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense in my head, but. As long as. As long as you get it while you're playing it. Yeah. And I guess if I had been playing it, I would know what the hell was going on. But, uh. Also, quite like this fact that you, you string your attacks together using what you want, so obviously, and the fact that you have to unlock your next moves for using so the it, same it's moves. It's really kind of hybrid uh, turn based action. And strategy, and yeah, it? in a way, and but it works. So, but uh, you can also because you've got a program on your side, um, you can change it the game genre and everything, mid combat and stuff like that, as well as like bring back the bosses to fight with you, for some reason. But mm, right. no, it works and it's actually quite a good game. It's just went on the new PS Plus. Uh, system, so. So you played it. So, thought might as well. No, it, it's a really good game. Um, I said, however, quite a hard story to fully explain. So long as you you understand, yeah, you understand it, you understand it whilst you play it, but it's really hard to explain it um, to someone who hasn't played it at least in the slightest but, bit. It's a game. It's an RPG, yeah. Yeah. But as they, they said, it's this kind of weird hybrid that it is part turn-based, part action, part strategy, 
Yeah. It, it, it's like it's throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks, isn't it? But it's all stuck in a way. Right. And it's like blended together and they've actually done it quite well. There's more than one of these, isn't there? Yes, there's two. That so you, are both on you, PS Plus. Are you going to play through this one? And... I'm going to play through this one and then go on to the second one, see if I like that one as much as I've enjoyed the first one so far. Um, no, it's actually quite a good game. Um, and you kind of get invested in the story like after not even like after quite a few hours it's quite uh short to get into it as well so like starting it you're like oh what's this you see and then you get invested because but you've also got like out of the like because it, it's based inside of a video game but like, you can go outside so of is it. this if that uh kind of along the same lines as hyper dimension neptune yeah. i think so in a way um Except you have to beat the video game inside of it to get the person out of it. So, right. But um, no, it, like you. But to progress, sometimes you have to go and play as the person who who helps you, the programmer and that, um, and do like stuff outside and like in the real world and like investigate places and stuff like that. So is this about the? That's just throwing everything at the wall, isn't it? That's yeah. about like um, your, your persona life sim part. yeah in a way like you have to make decisions and sometimes their decisions will actually give you a game over at times wow so is that it really has been right we're going to make this game what what are you going to put in it everything Just everything and it everything blends together well in a way mm. so can't well, if, I mean, if, if you like it you, know you like it it sounds like it's going to be a love or hate, hate game so yeah in a way but i think but if, if it's, it's a game that you like good, then so. i go for it that was the last one that you really put, put some time into. That's one which I put some really big time uh, into. There was one more that I put some time into, and this was my, my one time sync game, uh, which wasn't quite so, so friendly for uh, short burst gaming. Um, but I did play Ease Book 8 Lacrimosa of Dana. And straight into battle, so we're uh, action RPGing this one. Um, not like you concern you typically like turn based stuff. Uh, I want to do it, but actually, it, it's it reminds me a lot of Nino Kuni too. They had me play. Mm. Um, take down that. But that's a big monster that I just took down quite easily. I think you'll find. Um, you see how how easy I can take out those um, seahorse things as opposed to. How not quite so easy the the spider crab things are. Like they've all got different weaknesses, um, and those things are particularly weak against uh, the weapon that I forged. Um, well, the character I play. All the characters have got different weapons, whether it be slash types or piercing types and that yeah. sort of thing. Um, it just adds a little bit of strategy in the the battles as you're running about, just indiscriminately taking things out. Um, And you can see that while it might not be terrific graphically from for a, a PS4 title, um, actually it's quite a, a nice game to play. It's, uh, it's like graphically I think there's little hints of Dragon Quest in there. Yeah. Which isn't the worst thing. So No, I like Dragon Quest. Um, the, the the music's nowhere near as good as Dragon Quest though, I have to have to say that. Um, I'm, I mean I'm doing a little bit of grinding as I'm moving from one um part of the map to the other, but actually you don't have to do massive amounts of grinding in this one. Well, up to the point that I've played it. So you saw the um like I said I, I, graphically it's quite Dragon Questy. Um doesn't really play like Dragon Quest because uh, obviously action RPG but um, I actually really quite quickly got into, into the story and um, no, one of the, like in all RPGs it's like the, the big thing is that you you have to care about the characters yeah um, otherwise you don't really see a point and that's something that, that he's kind of gets right 
is that you you care about Adol straight away and then like a, I mean you, you get marooned on this this island and you, you keep picking up new people kind of feeds my sweet and itch as well by collecting you know the, the 108 stars of destiny there isn't 108 stars of destiny but you know what I mean it's like it's like and they can be put in and out of your your party or or the special skills that they can do at your base which expands you know, just like in Suikoden where you know you'll get a merchant and you'll get a, a weapons master and yeah. you, so you got all these things as well um yeah really liked it um I, I know I'm quite late to the party I think there's a lot of people jumped on on this ease book eight when it first came out um it's actually an ease book nine as well which is on the new ps plus premium thing as well mm -hmm. which i think uh if we get through this we might go on to that as well um and i can't see why i wouldn't get through this because like i say it's it's scratching all these itches um but anyone who's never played an ease game uh but like sweeked and or drag list there's probably something here for you um that's what i think anyway yeah. so yeah played that really enjoyed my time with it um so that's everything that we've played so it now comes down to what we're choosing for each other to play for next month that's right so who do you want to go first what have you chosen for me well for you I've chosen a game that we picked up at Nerg, uh, which apparently is a brilliant game. I've never actually played it, but it's that hidden gem Xbox game. I want you to play Chronicles of Riddick, Escape from Butcher Bay. Apparently it's awesome. Uh, so let's see what you think. Yeah, I mean... I don't know what it's like, so if, if anybody, anybody who's watching has played this one and you want to... Yeah. Us, no. It seems as if it's got a bit of first person shooting and everything else. Well, well, apparently it's got, it's a bit like your, your game that you're playing now, it's like it throws everything at the wall to see what sticks. So it's, it's got, got it's quite a lot of sticks, yeah. and puzzle solving and stealth and yeah. Well, yeah. well similarly I've also picked the game that we've got in the egg. Um, right. For you I chose Shadow Man on the PS1. Excellent. Um, yeah, I've played Shadow Man through so... Uh, yeah. Oh, that'll be that'll be good to do. Um, well, there we go. That's everything that we played and everything that, well, that, we're, that we're going to play. Um, something else exciting happened in July. It did indeed. After going up and going down and never quite getting there, um, our subscriber count finally hit one fifty, um, which for most most people probably isn't a massive milestone, but for us, we're quite happy with that. Yeah. Um, I, I just I'm glad that that people like what we're doing. Um, then it doesn't matter whether it's ten people or ten thousand people that like what you're doing, as long as we are enjoying it and there's there's people that's that's also enjoying it. Yeah. I guess we keep doing that, but it gives us uh, a great excuse to get rid of some of our old shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not really though, is it? <laughs> it's not. Um, let's give away a game. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll pull a game out the the collection and we'll give it to someone. Um, we're, we're not going to make anyone jump through hoops for this. If you just leave a comment uh, down below uh, and you are subscribed, then you're eligible to, to yeah. win a game. So as simple as that. We'll, uh, we'll pick one out of the collection and we'll send it to you. Um, don't know what we'll send. We've got obviously several generations of stuff. Um, yeah. So you could get something from the seventies all the way through to modern day. We'll we'll have a look and we'll decide. Yeah. But that's it for this time. So if you haven't already, give us a like, share, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you're gonna find out when we upload. And we will see you in the next video.